Business editor Ross Greenwood joins us. And Ross, tell us, which companies have borne the brunt of the fall today? Well, I can take you through uh, some of those that did pretty poorly, Doug. I'm going to say it was certainly travel stocks. It was certainly tech stocks as well. Some of the market, darling. So these are the travel stocks that got knocked about as that extension of this lockdown occurred in New South Wales. So Webjet, number one, down 5.5%. Corporate travel, another big travel agency business, down 3.8%. These have all seen big recoveries for a period of time as well, James. So, you know, sort of to see them coming down again, it is directly related to the extension of the lockdown in Sydney. There's no doubt. Flight set are down 3.6%. You can see here even Qantas down 3.1%. And its shares had genuinely recovered over a period of time. So there's a problem. The second sector that really is affected is technology uh, stocks. So here, some of the favourite tech stocks on the market. Zip down 5.5%. It had been stronger this week. Suggestions it might be taken over at one stage. Afterpay, which had recovered from about $90 back to $117, down more than 5% today. Appen, basically a chip maker, down by 3.4%. Wise Tech, similar company, down 3.5%. So really, the, the, the extension of this lockdown, the severity of it in New South Wales, Australia's biggest urban economy, really has had an impact on the stock market overall today. I get that uh, people are not going to be travelling and that's why the travel shares go down, but what's the rationale behind some of these uh, tech shares uh, where people are buying things because people do a lot of shopping online? What's, what's the connection between that and the lockdown? Well, I think it's broadly that these stocks have flown so high that if there's any overall reversal in the stock market, they're almost like the canaries in the coal mine to a certain extent. They're the ones that get hit hardest uh, when things go bad. They're also the ones that soar highest uh, when things are going well. And so, as I say, these stocks really do swing around. They gyrate significantly and that's precisely what you've seen today. In other words, if you're a punter, get on them. That's the idea. <laughs> and now speaking of punters, what happened to Crown shares today after the Victorian Royal Commission heard of a letter from the casino giant claiming it could default on, and I'm not getting this number wrong, $900 million of debt if it loses its licence? Yeah, OK, so let's go to the share price first. You can see here Crown shares, $10.97 today. They're down 2.1% on the day. But in the last month, have a look, they're down almost 12%. So that's the situation. Now, here is the actual letter in question that I have in my hand. So this is the letter really here from Arnold Block Lever uh, to the Victorian Gaming Minister, uh, that is Melissa Horn. Now, this is the important part of this letter, which you can see significant amounts of it are redacted. Uh, and that's a key here. Now, the important part about this letter is all about the fact that they say that if, say, for example, Crown were to lose its licence, then it could very well have an event of default. In other words, it could be in breach of its lending covenants to that tune of $900 million net debt. It then goes on to say that there are some 11,000 employees of Crown, more in fact, that could be affected adversely if that event of default were to occur. In other words, this is seen to be a warning. But in many cases, it's this letter that the Royal Commission into Crown in Victoria was highly critical of the company sending to the gaming minister simply because it was said to be a way in trying to subvert the events and the findings of that Royal Commission. And finally, Ross, one of the big stories this week has been an alleged, and here another big number, $270 million fraud against Westpac Bank. The boss of this future forum company that's at the center of this allegation was supposed to arrive back from Greece today to front the federal court. Did he show? He did not show. In fact, this is the important part about this. Speaking about the faulting and going into liquidation, well, this company called uh, Finance Forum now appears to be headed for the liquidation. Now, this man, Bill Pappas, is due back tomorrow. Uh, it may be, said Justice Michael Lee, that Mr Pappas does return to Australia tomorrow, although at present that's not entirely clear. The last we knew of Bill Pappas is he left Australia to go and watch a football match in Greece. He's the owner of a second division club... They're called Xanthi. They played in the final playoffs. They lost, so they didn't go to the main division. He was supposed to come home. He hasn't come home. The second thing is it also said today, there's another point, it appears that the Forum Finance has been involved in a long-running calculated and elaborate fraud which would rank high in the catalogue of corporate misfeasance. Now, interesting to see whether Bill Pappas comes home or not tomorrow. That will be the big question. But as I say, the judge has certainly given them a serve today.
<laughs> well, yeah, and I can imagine with all the trouble people are having getting home, I think maybe he's, uh, you know, not too eager to do that either. Anyway, Ross Greenwood, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to talk with us, and uh, see you again next time. Good on you, James.